Hello, this is Jason Keller with TTR. Today we're going to expand on our introduction to SharePoint series to discuss uh, a common feature in SharePoint called a document library. Uh, document libraries are where we store documents or files that we want to share across the enterprise. So uh, this is definitely an introduction video that should be uh, taken by or viewed by people who are just newly getting acquainted with SharePoint and want to learn how to use some of the features here in SharePoint. If you're fairly experienced in SharePoint, this video probably won't give you a lot of value, but if you're new to SharePoint, hopefully I'll fill in some of those gaps that you're running into uh, just trying to use the software. So the first thing to understand around SharePoint is uh, how we store documents in SharePoint. So as you can see here, I'm on a site in SharePoint and I have what is called a library. So in this case, our library is called Shared Documents. Now, as you notice, there are several folders here as well as files. So a document library is very similar to the way we used to store documents in the enterprise, which might be like a file share, uh, your home drive a share drive, something of that nature. The advantage of putting this in SharePoint is that it's now in the enterprise, it's in the web, um, it's a lot easier to get access to as well as um, the cool search features and indexing features that are part of SharePoint make getting to this information a lot more uh, powerful and a lot easier. Um, to upload a document into SharePoint, you just need to be in what they call a contributors group. So depending on what site uh, you might be on, you may or may not have access to upload documents. So um, that's just the way SharePoint's uh, set up. And it's set up around a security model that allows people to either view documents, upload documents, or in the case of a site owner, you can actually create these document libraries or these uh, knowledge repositories where you can put information in. So as you can see, we're in our shared documents and we have several folders and files. So the first thing uh, you might want to do is if you're working on a document on your desktop, you might want to upload that into SharePoint. Um, the advantage of having it in SharePoint is then you can share it with your colleagues without having to send it through email or something of that nature or putting it on a share drive. So to upload a document is really quite easy. If you have a contributor's access, you will have this little button here in your shared documents that is add a document. Now you can also access a document library over on your quick launch. So as you can see here, we have libraries and shared documents. So if I click on that, that will actually give me a, a better view of my shared document library. So this now is just an exclusive view of that document library. And again, I still have the add document um, button here. So we'll just go ahead and click on that. From there, you have the option to browse through document or upload multiple documents. We're just gonna upload a single document this time. So we'll just click browse. Then you would navigate to wherever this file might live. So it might be on your desktop, it might be somewhere on your C drive, it might be on a shared drive, wherever that file is. And you go find that file. And I have a document here called JSON test. And we'll go ahead and just open that one and hit OK. So what happens now is you see the JSON test document is now here in SharePoint. Now, since I've uploaded this to SharePoint, I really don't need it on my desktop anymore. Um, it's probably better practice to just delete it so you're not tempted to update that one. And then you have two different versions of the document running around, one in SharePoint, one on your desktop. I am definitely uh, a person who starts my documents on my desktop, and then when I get them ready for review, I upload them into SharePoint. Uh, you can also just create documents directly in SharePoint as well. It's pretty much up to you how you want to do that. Now that the document is in SharePoint, it's very easy to access. So here it is. What if I want to update it, Jason? It's a, a very good question. Just go ahead and click on the file. At that time, you'll be given a prompt if you want to read this file or edit this file. So we'll select Edit and we'll hit OK. Now, depending on, on how your SharePoint is installed in your environment, you might actually have something where they're called Microsoft Office Web Apps. Microsoft Office Web Apps will allow you to actually edit the document directly in SharePoint without actually opening Microsoft Word. In this case, uh, in this environment, I don't have that installed, so it just opened it in the native application, which is Microsoft Word. And then you'll notice it opened it in a protected view. Honestly, a little bit uh, annoying. I've just told SharePoint I want to 
edit this document but again it's going to ask me if I want to edit this document again so I'll just say enable editing and then I'll go ahead and add any changes so when I add my change all I have to do is just save it and this is actually saving it back into SharePoint it's not saving it back to my desktop it's actually the file that's here in SharePoint so if I close this document you notice now that I have my updated time and I updated it modified by Jay Keller and if I click on the document and let's just do read only this time you'll see that I have the, the hello world here now if I went back to my desktop and looked at that file Jason's test and open it you'll notice that it doesn't have the hello world on it All right, so that is how you upload a document into SharePoint. Uh, one of the things that you'll probably want to avoid doing is uploading the document over and over again. So as an example, say we have this document here, but I have a newer version of it somewhere. So let's just say we have a newer version of it here on my desktop. And let me just add some text to it. So now I have uploaded or, or changed the, the content of this document. I'll just save it and close it. What would happen in the past if you were using like a file share is that you might go ahead and name that version 1, version 2, version 3, something of that nature. Uh, in SharePoint you don't have to do that. In this particular case I have a document library that has what's called versioning enabled on it. Versioning will actually allow me to upload a file with the same name and it will just save it as a newer version of that. So as you can see here, if I click on this document, I can go down to my version history and you see that I have basically two different versions. So this is the version that I uploaded and then this is the last version where I up updated the text that said hello world. So in this case, why don't we just go ahead and add the document again. We'll just browse to my desktop because I have a newer version of the document there. And one thing that I neglected since I was going so quickly was there was a little check mark on there and it says add as new version and it was automatically check marked and I just that's the default value that was okay I, I went ahead and uploaded it so now when I look at my version history on this document you'll notice that I have a new version associated with uh, my changes so if I actually click on that document and up open it you'll see that this is the actual document that I updated on my desktop that I then uploaded over top of the existing file so that's the newest version which is the version that will open by default when I click on the document itself so there it is if I wanted to see the first version of this document I can then just click on the menu here go to version history and click on my very first version And you'll see here's the first version of my document so it's a very powerful tool to have versioning enabled and then also using a document library to store your files uh, please stay tuned for the next how-to video where I will actually show you how to send an email link to a document versus actually sending the document itself which is definitely going to make your email administrators much happier uh, a lot less files getting sent back and forth in email and allows for you to know what the most current version of any one document is thank you for joining us and I hope that you learned something today and you can check us out on our website at ttrcorp.com thank you very much